Hi, I'm going to attempt some anthropology this evening and it's prompted by that uh, item of news which you may have noticed from a few days back where in um, a part of Florida in a retirement zone um, there was a sort of pro-Trump procession of golf carts and it really was rather nasty because one of the uh, paraders driving along in his golf cart past all the shops raised a fist and shouted the appalling phrase white power well of course <laughs> what followed was uh, uh, the other old folk lining the high street who clearly took exception to this uh, sentiment started banging on the golf court cart and, and, and swearing and using terrible, terrible language and there was some, um, it was on the edge of sort of social unrest amongst all these old people. Anyway, so Trump of course, because he doesn't have a, the attention span of a gnat, retweeted this, um, this clip and um, of course that was made much of quite rightly because you know you really if you do tweet something and retweet something you should pay attention really pay attention to the content and his advisors uh, succeeded in persuading him to delete the tweet and again this prompted me to want to find out more about this community it's in a part of central Florida called The Villages. And a few things to say about this. It is an enormous kind of retirement facility. And when I was house hunting, I came across on Right Move and Zoopla plenty of uh, affordable looking properties which were within retirement communities and of course when you look into it you see that there's a cluster of people your sort of age so obviously you're like-minded now that's not logical to me because how is it that we are all individuals throughout our lives but suddenly we become 55 plus and we're all like-minded. So that doesn't make any sense. So I did any future searches with the no retirement properties filter very firmly on. I can kind of see how people might be attracted to this residential setup. You've got some um, usually some communal facilities, gardens, perhaps lounges, perhaps a cafe. You've got um, staff on site all the time in case you get into any difficulty. The grounds are looked after for you. But of course, all this comes at a monthly price, which can be quite high. In this country, these sort of complexes tend to be quite small perhaps a block of apartments, perhaps a group of small houses around a courtyard and that sort of thing. But um, in the United States, of course, it's different. So a little bit about the villages. <laughs> I, having lived there, I did recognise that anything that wanted to market itself or present itself as somehow posh and moneyed would have all sorts of English or British or Scottish or Irish kind of names, place names and street names and that sort of thing. And hence the villages. Well, the villages, um, just a bit of background about why places like the villages exist at all. When I lived in Detroit, there was this kind of middle-class aspiration to retire to Florida. 
And there's a whole group of people in the United States, I've discovered in, the, in my research, called snowbirds. And they either live and work normally in the, the northern Midwest or the East Coast or the Northwest, where it, the winters can be quite challenging. And they migrate to places like Florida during the winter months and they're called snowbirds. <laughs> Oddly enough, there's another group called sunbirds who live in the heat of the south and migrate to the cool of the north during uh, the winter months, but there we are. Florida, of course, is a favorite destination because it's marketed itself quite well. It's called, as you probably know, the Sunshine State and it has plenty of nice weather. Um, temperatures way up into the 90s and not, uh, not far below the 60s Fahrenheit in the winter, so it's comfortable. Snow happens, but it is an extraordinary weather event when it does. What isn't extraordinary are the tornadoes and hurricanes. And a few years back I was sent to a conference in Orlando and it was the first time I had ever been to Florida. I never had the slightest desire ever to go to Florida. And what can you say? Um, in the hotel one evening I was watching television, I think a day or so after I arrived, and there was something I remember from my childhood coming up, flashing on the television screen, tornado alert. Now, there are two classes of tornado announcements. Tornado warnings, which means there is a strong possibility that um, tornadoes may develop. And the next one up is the terrifying tornado alert, which means they have developed and they're coming after you. So I, I remembered the sort of drill that we used to adopt all those years ago when I was a kid. I got into the bath because it's the most armoured, protected part of, of any building. So I spent some time um, lying in the bath until I left the television on until things were had calmed down. But, you know, that's the beautiful weather of the Sunshine State. Other aspects of Florida are that, well, it's all based on the fact that even if you look at the map, it is quite clearly simply an enormous sand spit. And the elevation is around 100 feet above sea level. And it's pretty flat. I think there is one famous hill um, that is some 300 feet high, and that's it. And of course, it has an interesting flora uh, and a beautiful um, range of, uh, of, of floral um, kind of um, vegetation, hence the name. It also has some interesting fauna, um, many of which are not shy to have a look around the backyard, including things like um, alligators and uh, some species of crocodile. <laughs> oh, God. And of course, it's known for um, quite a lot of land-based water. If you look at the map, there's a lot of kind of quasi-circular lakes, and it's because of all the sinkholes. So it's a kind of bedrock of limestone with lots of cavities in it, overlain by sand dunes, and then there's some vegetation on the top. That's Florida, right? So, um, attracting you that yet? Does it sound a nice place to live? Oh, God. So that's the background. Now, specifically about the, um, the villages. They're still owned or at least controlled, the whole business is controlled by one family. 
And while you own your house, there are huge numbers of restrictions. So there's, it's equivalent to planning restrictions that we might have in the United Kingdom. So you can't paint your house any colour that you like. And you've got to follow all sorts of rules so that it remains looking nice and homogenous, which it absolutely does. Um, there are six types of houses that you can purchase. And each type is based on one floor plan, and they're all single storey as far as I can see. So the lowest class, I think, is called the, the patio um, something or other. And when you look round the streets, which you can on street view, even though all the roads within the villages are private, you can see that some are mirror images of the one next door, introducing an exciting bit of variety. The whole of the villages is some 32 square miles. Its elevation is even lower than the average elevation of Florida at some 75 feet above sea level. And the population is 51,000 plus and rising rapidly because, of course, everybody wants to go and live in the villages when they retire. The lowest class of house you can purchase uh, would cost you something in the region of $120,000. Has one bed and one bath and uh, I suppose some sort of kitchen area and a little bit of yard round the outside. Uh, not really a garden of any sort. And they're they're quite tightly packed together and the square footage is some just over 400 square feet which is half the size of my flat. Now my flat is nice and roomy and I'm sure those people who have seen it would agree um, and it has a lot that uh, these places don't have including it's double the size so that's one thing now because of um, the housing legislation over there to have some the benefits of the 55 plus kind of planning and housing laws there are certain rules that you have to follow so imagine you would bought a house, one of these houses in in um, the villages, and you moved away from all your family in Chicago, including your grandchildren. Um, now, persons under 19 cannot reside or stay in the villages for more than 30 days in a, a calendar year. Well, just think about that. And, you know, it's not like going from London to Cornwall. It's thousands of miles you're travelling. And, oh, I don't know, it sounds, it sounds like absolute hell to me. Absolute, absolute hell. So, why would people choose to live here? I endured watching a 30-minute promotional video produced by the granddaughter of the instigator of the villages, extolling the virtues and why you should certainly at least seriously consider buying a house in the villages. If you look at the aerial views, and indeed, it's really emphasised in this promotional video. Golf. There are golf courses all over the damn place. 
including ones designed by Arthur Palmer and the like. Um, and if you're a resident of the villages, you have free access to these courses and you don't even have to pay a green fee. That is for the ones that are nine hole courses. For the 18 hole, you have to pay something. There are clubs. There are dancing clubs and crafting clubs and shuffleboard clubs. And uh, there's sport, aside from golf, like something called pickle pickleball. Don't ask me to explain it. Google it, right? Do yourself a favour, Google it. Um, there are recreation centres and country clubs, and you have automatic free membership if you are a resident of the villages. So you can go and talk rubbish to other people who are like-minded like you for hours on end. Um, there's shopping and there's some sort of mainstream food um, outlets and restaurants and that sort of thing. Um, and it all sounds lovely because, you know, they, you're never bored. You've always got something to do. You've always got someone to talk to who's like you. Um, so this idyll is enhanced further by something which... I don't know if it's peculiar to the villages, but um, anyway, it's certainly there. Uh, the main mode of transport around the streets of the villages are golf carts. Golf carts, of course. <laughs> so that's how you go and get your shopping. You're allowed to have a car, but you're, you're not really going to fit in unless you drive around in a golf cart. And, of course, because there's this huge conglomeration, 51,000 people and increasing in one area, you become rich pickings for the scammers. You know, the sellers of unnecessarily expensive water softeners and insurance schemes and all the other things that scammers like these uh, target the older you know, part of the population for. And also because effectively your, your benefits are largely controlled by one family, then if they decide to increase any of the charges, and of course there are charges, as you would expect for general maintenance and the like, uh, so they can increase all of these charges um, as much as as much as they like. Interested yet? So there we are, that's the villages. And apparently there is a kind of, I get a sense that a significant portion of the residents end up rather regretting their their choice of um, of uh, housing. And um, this raises their sort of ground state when it comes to getting angry. It, uh, to me, it, it sounds hell. I really don't know what else to say about the place. Um, if you want to find out more, of course, um, just Google the villages and you'll find all sorts of things which will make you extremely glad that you made no such life choice. Politically, of course, they tend to be they tend to be Republican uh, and are often on the campaign trail by various Republican candidates. So uh, I think some of them are changing even in the villages. And um, as for the demographics, they're almost exclusively white. Uh, there are a few blacks, I think it's 0.3% who are black residents. And even smaller percentages of the 
other ethnic and cultural groups. In the promotional video, I noticed that, oh, well, there are places of worship. So they showed a picture of a sort of Episcopal church and one, I think, of a Catholic church and one or two other churches and then a quick shot of a synagogue and that was it, right? So you can take from that what you what you will. I must say I, I did enjoy doing this research because it made me feel very lucky indeed and so lucky that I live in a normal community where there are people of all ages and um, reasonably diverse backgrounds and um, it, it's just normal and normal is our one aspiration at the moment isn't it so have a fly over via google and google earth to the villages and fill your boots enjoy yourself <laughs>